DirecTV did not walk out of that uh, that auditorium empty-handed. Uh, congrats to John Ward and his crew here at at and and DirecTV for, for their 4K Ultra HD coverage. I mean, they are uh, fantastic. And that's why DirecTV is a leader in 4K Ultra HD and the first U.S. pay TV provider to bring you live sports in 4K. There are channels dedicated to 4K, including an audience, which is why we look so great every day <laughs> in 4K. DirecTV is your leader in 4K Ultra HD. 4K is four times the resolution of HD, and it's the next best thing to being there. DirecTV is all over that, just like Steven Jackson is all over the studio. Good to nice. see you, sir. Glad to be here. You bet. 14-year NBA veteran, a big three basketball participant. Can't Tickets wait. go on sale. Available on Ticketmaster.com starting tomorrow. It's Cube's Big Three League. Uh, Steven Jackson here. Before we talk about the Big Three, I want to talk about that big ring that's right there on your left mm -hmm, hand mm -hmm. that is your championship ring from the 03 spurs yes um you David and robinson's last year okay um i was able to play with tim duncan and dave something i hold on hold on to dearly and able to start on a championship team you know was special to me and uh it was really the beginning of my career. Well, I started the show by singing the praises of the Spurs and Popovich in particular in the mm -hmm. front office, and we talked about it with Kevin Harlan and the in analogies that have constantly been made to the Spurs and the Patriots and the way that the system is all set up. So you know specifically, what, what makes Popovich and playing for him and that organization so special, Stephen? Well, two things for me that I noticed – he made me understand that the NBA is a, is a profession, it's a job, it's not a game no more. So I had to come to the gym every day with the notion that I'm going to work. I'm, this is a job. I'm coming here to get better and, and, and to make everybody around me better. It's not solely about me. Second, the preparation. I've been on a lot of teams in the NBA and no team prepares like Pop. You know, each team gets a scouting sheet on what guys do well and what the guys don't like to do. But the Spurs... Scout reports are in high and in, in real detail. You know, if a guy likes to drive right, they'll tell you that. And you can, and it's easy to guard guys. And that's and Kawhi won't say it, but that's why he's one of the best defenders because Pop has, hasn't prepared for everybody he has to guard every night. Meaning what? So it, if you let somebody drive uh, with his dominant hand, mm -hmm. if you let somebody Go dribble middle. in a certain dribble to a certain part of the floor, mm -hmm. it's on you. Pop taking you out. When I played. If, I, if we got a sky report, we don't let guys go middle. We send them to the baseline to the help to Dave and Tim. If I get beat middle, he's taking me out. That's how serious it is. So guys are real, real locked in on detail when they play against Pop, and that's why guys he has he always has an unsung hero because he coaches Kawhi just like he coaches Simmons. Everybody's equal on his team. He used to get on Tim Duncan just as much as he got on me, and that's why he's so respected. Now, the first time you saw that. What'd you think when you saw Greg Popovich get on Tim Duncan? I was like, well, if he can get on Tim Duncan, then I, I should be able to take everything because Tim don't make no mistakes. He don't talk back. He do everything the right way. And that let me know, you know, that he treats everybody the same. And it's all about the team goal. Pop doesn't put anybody higher than anyone else. It's all about winning as a team. Steven Jackson here in the Rich Eisen Show. And in the same way that, you know, having covered the NFL with the NFL Network for 14 years and you hear – Similar things uh, when Willie McGinnis tells me about Belichick. about Belichick mm -hmm. and anyone else who's played for Belichick tells me about Belichick. It sounds so simple. It mm -hmm. really does. You're prepared. Do your job. Figure right. it out. Why why don't other organizations do it? I mean, you played for so many other organizations. Why why don't others do what you're well, describing? Perfect example. This is why Pop would rather a Kawhi Leonard than a James Harden. Because, you know, this guy's going to play hard on both ends of the court. He's not worrying about scoring points. He's not worrying about being fat, being a, a, a fashion guy. Pop wants guys that love the game of basketball and that's going to play the right way. And you see all these teams that skipped out on Kawhi. You see all the teams that didn't sign me. He knows those certain guys that he can bring in that's going to be glue guys and that's going to play the game and play the game the right way. And he'll skip on a James Harden ten times for a Kawhi. He's just something he knows about the game, him and R.C. Buford. So it's the people he brings in and coaches them in a certain way as opposed to why, – so why can't other organizations adopt a similar style? I mean, it's, mm, other – like that's the, a good question. I mean, the, the Hawks took uh, Budenholzer right. from, from the, the Spurs. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it, can, from what you tell, are, are, is he trying to build a, a similar style They're in trying Atlanta? To. They're trying to in Atlanta, but – Pop level of respect is so high 
Now, Buzz won a championship. He, you know, he, he, he's an understudy of Pop. No question. He knows everything Pop, that Pop teaches. But at the same time, he's not Pop. <laughs> and Pop is the type of guy that will get in your face, curse you out, all that. Bud is not that guy, you know. And you, so you can't, that's stuff you can't teach. You have to be born with that. Like I say, being a leader, you have to be born with it. You can't, be, you can't get taught how to be a leader. You have to be born with it. And Pop has that. And he has a lot of things that you can't teach and you can't explain. You know, even like I said, it's, it's amazing that I respect an older white guy. And he knows me more than anybody. And we're from two different parts of the earth. But I respect him so much. And if I didn't play for Pop, I don't think I would have had a 14-year career. I don't think I would have lasted that long because I didn't understand you know, what was important and what the game was about. Got to take a 60-second break. Back with Steven Jackson, whose new coach is named Charles Oakley. Charles Oak. And, I, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm a Nick fan, and what happened to him was an outrage. I'm so pissed about it. Every time I think about it, I get enraged. And, I, and I'm normally in... in I, I normally don't get really upset about sports anymore, yeah. having to talk <laughs> about it professionally. Been around so long. It really pisses me off, and I want to talk to you about Oakley. I want to ask you our poll question and what happened with James Harden going yeah. out last night, hitting the club after yeah. what he, the performance, right, after that big loss. Uh, I'm here with Steven Jackson, 14-year NBA veteran, getting set to play in Cubes League for Charles Oakley, along with Larry Hughes yeah, as well. Yeah. That's right, and Chauncey Billups. What a team. That's next <laughs> on The Rich Eisen Show. And we're halfway through our Friday show. Steven Jackson, part of the Big Three Basketball League, Cube, uh, forming it, a uh, 14-year NBA veteran. Again, tickets go on sale tomorrow uh, at Ticketmaster.com and other places near you. Brockman, ask the poll question that's brought to you by True Car. You can find out what other people in your area paid for the same car you're looking for and on average save over $3,000 off MSRP. Whether you're looking for a new or used car, visit True Car to enjoy a more confident car buying experience. Brockman, go ahead. Yeah, Steven. Uh, NBA MVP regular season award, but if you were voting today, who would you vote for? Steph Russell. Curry, LeBron James, Kawhi, Harden, Russell Westbrook. Of course, Russell Westbrook. Triple double. Never has been, hasn't been done in how long? It's hard to average a triple double after losing the MVP teammate and be able to still get to the sixth seed in the West. That's impressive. No, it's a no-brainer for so me. So even including what we're seeing in the playoffs right now? Even including. You still you still file your ballot for Westbrook. What did you make of Harden going out and clubbing after last night's loss and his personal performance? You know, I, he has to be smarter than that. You know, you have to be smarter than that. You can't come out with, with an effort like that and the first, the first picture seen after a big loss like that can't be at a concert. You being a leader of a team, you being one of the best players in the league, to after losing a game like that, especially to your teammates, you, it has to be hit you a little bit more personal. You know, I know every time I lost in regular season or even in the playoffs, I didn't want to be seen for two or three days because I cared that much about the game. And it, it questions how much he cares about the game. To me, you know, you can't have a game-deciding game for your season being the best player and you come out and really you playing like you're not even like like you're not like you're not interested in playing basketball that day, to take to not take a shot to the second quarter like this guy shoots the ball all the time sometimes too much. So what happened last night? I I feel I I honestly feel like this, Rich. The guys don't really care about winning that much in the NBA no more, and it's it's obvious. I mean you don't you, his body language yesterday. I've never seen his body language like that. This is. Get, this is game six in the playoffs to go to the Western Conference Finals. You're supposed to put your blood, sweat, and tears. You're supposed to be willing to die to get to extend the series or get to the next round. I don't see that in the NBA. You know, I think all the guys that 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 that's willing to die and play basketball and die to win are in the big three now. They didn't push us all out. So <laughs> if you want to see good competition, if you want to see guys fight to win and care about winning, watch the big three because the NBA is losing it. Now, we'll get to the big three in a second. You, you don't think LeBron wants to live It's and very die? few. It's very few. Okay. LeBron wants to win. Kawhi wants to win. They, they put it all on the line. Russell Westbrook puts it all on the line every night. You can't say that about James, James Harden. He doesn't play defense at all. You know, I, I respect guys that play on both ends of the court. You know, Paul George. You know, I respect guys like that that really show that they care about the game. What about Draymond Green? Do you respect him? Love the fact. I, I call Draymond a more athletic version of me because he's willing to, to fight for his teammates. He's willing to, to put his points aside, do anything to win games. And you got to respect a guy like that because 
Rich, the, the game of basketball changes a lot of our lives. Coming, coming from where we come from and these areas where we don't get many opportunities, basketball changes our lives. It take care of our families. You know, so guys that appreciate the game and play it and, and, and play it the right way, I love that because it's a million guys that want to be in our shoes that don't get this opportunity. So why not take advantage of it? Steven Jackson here on the Rich Eisen Show. So you're in a team with Chauncey Billups. Larry and Hughes. Larry Hughes. Who else is Reggie on Reggie Evans mm -hmm. and Brian Cook and the coaches. O.G. Oakley. Charles Oakley. Charles Oakley. Yes, sir. Now, what is Oakley thinking about right now? after what happened to him at Madison Square Garden. What well, is your conversation with him like about it? Well, you know, I played with Oak uh, in, in uh, Charlotte, too. He's my coach in Charlotte, too. So we have a good relationship. But, you know, we've never really talked about the New York incident, to be honest. Because I think our relationship is to the point where he knows how I feel. <laughs> he knows I'm upset about it. He knows I'm, I'm ready to go back to MSG with him today and kick some ass if we need to. OK, and so he understands that. So that's not a conversation we have to have. But he's in a position now where, you know, he just want to be respected. And he's been respected his whole. He's definitely respected by guys that play now to guys that play with him. Well, it seems to me, Stephen, there's only one guy who doesn't respect him. Hmm. And he's the owner of the New York Knicks. Right. Or now he's 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 reached out the olive branch because the, the commissioners started knocking, he had some, to. knocking some heads together. Right. And, you know, MJ had to call and all this stuff. But. I'm glad I wasn't there because if I'd have been there with Oak, it would have been Malice in the Palace Part 2. <laughs> we would have been throwing security around, throwing everybody around because that wasn't right. You don't treat a guy, you know, that's that's probably put more more effort and passion into that organization and plan than anybody that's ever played there. And you got to give that man his respect. So what happened with the Malice in the Palace when you and the Pacers went at it with the man who was previously known as – James, as a uh, Ron Artest, Ron Artest, right? I still call him Ron. Right. I still Metal call World him Ron. Priest, but yeah. what what happened here? Okay, so this is what a lot of people don't know. Okay, so the game was basically over. You know, at that point, every the whole league knew we were the best team in the league that year. We had the best record, and this game was our test to see where we were. You know, they were one of the best teams at the time. So we went there and blew them out. We went by 15 with like 45 seconds left, and. Um, that was my first year on the team. So you, you got to remember that the previous year they played in the Eastern Conference Finals. So it was already a rivalry there that I had no idea about. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the game, some kind of way, Jamal Tinsley and Ron Artest are having a conversation at the free throw line. I'm not knowing Ron is thinking about returning a foul to Ben from last year's playoffs. If I would have known that, I would have stopped him. We all know Ron wasn't in his right mind. Mm -hmm. he, did, he didn't need a battery in his back to do something stupid. He did, that on his, he did that on his own. So he didn't need a battery in his back. But Jamal Tinsley put a battery pack in his back and told him, like, if you want to get this foul that you owe him from last year, why get it? The dumbest thing to tell him, we're up 45 points. We're, we're like 16-4 to four at the time, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. We had the best record in the league. And uh, he go fouls Ben. I'm guarding Ben. I let him score. Clock, let the clock run out. I just let Ben walk to the basket, let him score, let the clock run. He comes from out of nowhere and take Ben out the air. This is what people don't know. A couple of days before that, I think Ben had just lost his mom. So he can't. He wasn't even supposed to play that game. He showed up at the game. So I know he wasn't in his right mind. I mean, losing my, if I lose my mom, I'll probably be you no know, telling what I'll be the next couple of days. But he filed him. And Ben didn't expect it. Next thing you know, Ben run up to Ron and push his head out to the parking lot. So his body's still staying here, but his head is in the parking lot. <laughs> so we got to find a way to get his head back on his <laughs> neck. No, just, but Ben pushed him so hard. Like, I, I didn't think Ron was going to be alive. And, and as Ben pushed him, Ben just started swelling up and just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So by that time, we're just trying to calm Ron down because we're trying to get out of there. We won the game. Let's get out of here, get this win. And to Ron's credit, we never seen Ron calm down or relax like that. So he did it. And as soon as he calmed down, a beer came and hit him dead in the face. He took Ben Wallace throwing all kind of stuff at him. He took people saying stuff to him. But when the beer came down his face, he just lost it. Me personally, I couldn't take another man throwing anything in my face. That's just like spitting in my face. And when he went, I didn't even think twice. Like, I didn't think, well, maybe I'll get fined. No. I'm with these guys more than I'm with my family during the course of the year. So this is like my brothers. I was raised to be a, a protector and, and, and to, be, to be with my brothers doing thick and thin. When he went, I just went with him. Rick, I, I, Rich, I, I didn't think twice. Went in there, laid a couple guys out, 
and did what I had to do. But the funniest part about it is going to make all y'all laugh. We get in the locker room, and we're sitting there. My legs all scratched up from hopping over the bleachers. Ron sitting there calming down. His first question to me, mm-hmm. do you think we're going to get in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> you know my reply? <laughs> you lucky we have a job. <laughs> Mm. He asked me that, and we all, the whole locker room was like, no, Ron, I, you serious? <laughs> trouble? We, we passed trouble. We passed trouble. We finna get kicked out the league, and, you know, the fines came down. Did you, were you genuinely concerned you were going to get kicked out of the league? That yes. you would lose, the, you, that, that your NBA privileges would be revoked? I actually thought my career was over. I actually did, you know. Um, Ron had been in trouble already, but I knew, you know, it's never been a situation where they, we, a team went in there and started fighting fans. You know, I knew this was something new, and it was bad for the league because they were trying to clean up the dress code at the time and make us wear suits and all that nonsense. And I was actually worried, when, especially when Ron got suspended first and they suspended him for the whole season. Mm-hmm. I was like, Whew. well, if they, if they suspended him for the whole season, they might, you know, at least let me play next year. I ended up getting 30 games, and I ended up getting to get fined 30, 3 million for 30 games. And uh, I need my 3 million back. <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> now, though, I mean, any regrets? This is the only thing I regret? Mm-hmm. I regret how we handle it. I don't regret defending my teammate. Mm-hmm. I don't regret that. I regret going in the stands and punching fans. I regret that totally. Especially regret losing 3 million. <laughs> <Back. laughs> for sure. Well, a big three looks like a bunch of fun. I'm excited, man. Just to be able, just you're gonna to, be on the road. I mean, you're gonna be traveling. I mean, this is this is this is this is work for you guys and everybody who's doing this. Being thing. able to compete again, you right? know, all these guys that's in the big three. These are guys that we all play with in the NBA. So, who are you looking forward to competing against? First game of the season, my best friend Al Harrington. We playing against him and Kenyon Martin. They have a stacked team too. And we played him the first game of the season. And Kenyon's coach is George Carl. Is that that guy? No, their coach is. Uh, <laughs> Do I have the wrong information? Yeah, wrong information. I'm, I'm pretty sure George Carl is not his coach. <laughs> nice. I'm pretty sure George Carl is not his coach. I did. I kind of smooth played that. One. That was nice. That was nice. I caught it. That was nice. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. Please come back anytime, man. man. Anytime. Shout out to Ice Cube, man. Shout out to Roger Mason, man. Oh, Big Three League. That's right. Big Three League. And tickets go on sale starting tomorrow for the Big Three League. I look forward to covering it seeing it they're coming here to los angeles we'll be all over it when you come by in los angeles good to see you man, Stephen thanks jackson. for having me man that's right Stephen jackson here on your phone calls still to come here on the rich eisen show the rich eisen show weekdays at noon eastern on audience if you like that download our app please just if if it's a memory thing just delete other apps you don't need those apps this app the rich eisen show app you need that